JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's weekly market outlook webinar for the week November the 16th until November the 20th. I am Harald Ambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFT, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But uh, before we start, let's read our disclaimer first. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, there are no central bank meetings on this week on this week's agenda, but we do get the minutes from the latest RBA gathering, as well as several data, including the UK and Canadian CPIs for the month of October. That said, we believe that for another week, investors will stay mostly focused on developments surrounding the coronavirus and the potential of vaccine, as well as on headlines surrounding Brexit and any progress or not with regards to a draft EU-UK trade accord. Now, let's take things from the beginning. Today, during the Asian morning, we already got Japan's preliminary GDP for the third quarter, which revealed a 5% rebound following an 8.2% tumble in the second quarter. We also got China's industrial production, fixed asset investment and retail sales, all for the month of October. Industrial production rose 6.9% year over year, the same pace as uh, in September, while fixed asset investment accelerated to 1.8% year over year from 0.8%. Retail sales accelerated as well uh, to 4.3% year over year from 3.3%. Now, as for the rest of uh, the day, the agenda appears uh, very light, with the only indicator worth mentioning being the New York Empire State Manufacturing PMI for November, which is expected to have risen to 13.50 from 10.50. On Tuesday, during the Asian morning, the RBA releases the minutes from, the la from its uh, latest policy gathering, at which uh, policymakers cut interest rates uh, to 0.10% from 0.25% and decided to extend their government bond buying program by 100 billion Aussies uh, to buy bonds of 5 to 10 years of maturity. Governor Lowe noted that a negative policy rate is extraordinarily unlikely, which means that officials are, um, are not willing to cut rates further, and if more is needed, they could boost their bond purchases. Now, with all that in mind, we will scan the minutes to see whether indeed the consensus is for no more rate cuts and how likely it is to get another QE expansion at one of the bank's upcoming gatherings. Later in the day, we get uh, the U.S. retail sales and industrial production, both for October. Both uh, headline and core sales are forecast to have slowed to 0.5% month over month and 0.6% month over month, from 1.9% and 1.5% respectively. With regards to the industrial production, it is expected to have rebounded 1% after sliding 0.6%. Uh, that said, we don't expect the US dollar to react much on economic data this week. We believe that the USD traders will stay, will stay focused on headlines surrounding the coronavirus and any further progress with regards to a potential vaccine. On top of that, they may also pay attention to any updates uh, with regards to President Trump's uh, legal actions over a fraud with regards to the US elections. Nonetheless, with legal experts saying that uh, Trump stands a uh, little chance of altering the election outcome, we are unlikely to see a major uh, change in the markets. As we know that last week, although the COVID era is not behind us, we are a step closer to finding the cure for the virus, which combined with uh, Biden's victory, is likely to keep risk-linked assets uh, like equities uh, supported. Now on Wednesday, 
The UK CPIs for October are due to be released. The headline rate is expected to have ticked up to 0.6% uh, year over year from 0.5%, while the core one is forecast to have held steady at 1.3% year over year. Such prints are unlikely to alter much expectations around the Bank of England's monetary policy plans, and thus uh, pound traders are likely to keep their gaze locked on developments surrounding the, uh, surrounding the Brexit landscape. At uh, last week's negotiations, uh, the UK and the EU were unable to narrow down their differences with regards to a potential trade accord, and thus talks, uh, talks are uh, set to continue this week as well. On Thursday, an EU summit uh, begins, which is the new deadline for a draft accord to be agreed. So anything suggesting that this may be the case could prove positive for the British pound, while the opposite may be true if the two sides fail once again to narrow the gap of uh, their differences. From the Eurozone, we get the final CPIs for October, but as it is always the case, they are expected to confirm their preliminary estimates. We get CPIs for October from Canada as well. The headline rate is expected to have ticked down to 0.4% year over year from 0.5%. While there is no forecast available for neither the core rate nor the trimmed mean one. At its uh, latest meeting, the Bank of Canada kept interest rates unchanged and uh, scaled back its QE program, note, uh, noting uh, that uh, the economic outlook has evolved uh, largely as anticipated in the, in the July monetary policy report. Plus, a downtick in headline inflation is unlikely to raise speculation for officials uh, reversing their decision at the upcoming gathering, namely expanding their QE purchases. From the US, we have uh, building permits and housing starts for, for October. Both are expected to have increased somewhat uh, from September. Now, on Thursday, during the Asian session, Australia's employment report for October is uh, scheduled to be released. The unemployment rate is expected to have risen to 7.2% from 6.9%, while the net change in employment is forecast to show that the economy has lost uh, 30,000 jobs after losing 29.5 thousand in uh, September. Although RBA Governor Lowe said that cutting rates into the negative territory is unlikely, conditional upon the RBA minutes revealing willingness of expanding QE if uh, deemed necessary, another set of uh, soft Australian data may increase speculation with regards uh, to that and thereby hurt uh, somewhat, uh, somewhat uh, the Aussie. However, we expect the risk-linked currency to stay mostly driven by developments surrounding the broader market sentiment. As we already noted, we expect investors' morale to stay supported, and thus we would treat any potential retreat in the Aussie as just a corrective move. Later in the day, the US existing home sales for October are coming out, and the forecast points to a 1.4% decline after a 9.4% uh, e increase in, uh, in September. Finally, on Friday, during the Asian session, Japan's national CPIs for October are coming out. The headline rate is forecast to have slid to, 0 point, to minus 0.3% year over year from 0%, while the core one is expected to have fallen to minus 0.7% year over year from minus 0.3%. Australia's preliminary retail sales for October are also due to be released, and the forecast points to a 1.5% month-over-month decline, following a 1.1% slide in September. Later in the day, we get more uh, retail sales data for October from the UK and Canada. With regards to the UK data, both uh, headline and core sales are expected to have slowed to 0.1% month-over-month and 0.2% month-over-month from 1.5% and 1.6% respectively. Canada's headline rate is expected to have slid to 0.1% month-over-month from 0.4%, but the core one is anticipated to have increased to 0.9% month-over-month from 0.5%. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much uh, for watching and listening. I hope you have a great week and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again uh, next uh, Monday. If you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around 8.30 a.m. GMT. So goodbye and have a nice day.
JFT Just Fair and Direct.